Hello and welcome to another episode of The Clever Dev. Today we're going to dive into the Material UI tabs and tab components. And you can see I've got some custom styling on the individual tab components. So tabs is a wrapper component that wraps individual tab components. And anyway, um, I have hover, active, and focus styling on here, and I've also styled the tab indicator. So we'll dive into the code, stick around. So here we are with the default styling on these tabs, and this is actually a fork, essentially a fork of a very basic um, documentation example from the MUI docs. So uh, no styling applied right now. Let's go and look at the code. I've got some defaults set up here. Most of this we're not gonna really explore or dive into. Like I said, it's, it's literally called basic tabs example in the MUI docs. What I am gonna do is I'm going to add um, some SX prop styling code, and I'm going to add the um, tabs, the tab indicator props prop, which will actually let us um, style the tab indicator. So some pretty cool stuff there. Uh, before we do that, what I want to do is show you what the DOM looks like that's necessary for being able to style the individual tab components. So here we go over here, we've got our um, we've got our DOM. So you can see that tabs is actually a wrapper that's three divs deep. You can see, you can tell because you see that class MUI tabs dash root dash scroller dash flex container. Um, so those are all direct um, elements being rendered because we have a tabs component. The individual tab components render as these buttons. Inside of these buttons, there is a span. I'm not gonna worry about that too much because we don't really need it for styling. Uh, but really this button element is what I'm gonna target for the hover, active, and focus styling. So keep that in the back of your mind and you can tell, let's just look at the DOM one more time, that that button is nested inside of tabs. So when we use the tabs SX prop, it's probably, if we said margin, for example, or color or background color, it would probably be applied to this div. But what I'm gonna do is I am going to uh, use the SX prop and then use a nested selector that looks for a child button. Uh, so that's why it'll grab those buttons. So anyway, with that said, um, yeah, let's go ahead and do that styling first, and then I will show you how to do the tab indicator styling. So first thing is let's actually target the button and just give it some border radius. Let's just say two. So that won't really be, that won't be visible yet because there's not any default hover styling, but we will see it as soon as we get, um, some hover color on here. And what did I put? I think I said background color. Blue, I think is what I had. So let's take a look at that. And I had a period there instead of a comma. Syntax matters, doesn't it? All right. So there we go. So you can see the border radius on those uh, on those corners, and now we've got that blue hover styling. So just to review the syntax here, make sure you have this space in here. That's what tells the browser that you're looking for a child. If it was like that, it would say, um, well, it doesn't really make sense, but let's say that was button class. Then it would look for button class at um, the tabs level instead of on a child. So anyway, once we've got hover on there, then active and focus are pretty easy. Uh, let's say gold for active and green for focus. And make sure we have commas after these two. So let's take a look and make sure that that is applying as expected. So got our red squigglies, but we could see from the compiler that the compiler was happy. Sometimes. VS Code is just a little bit slow. So I'm going to click down. Okay, so it looks like we don't have our active on there. We just have our focus. But let me show you why that is. Let's actually swap these two and have our focus come before our active. Let's see what happens now. So I've got our hover. Now with the click down, then I see that gold that I expected from the active. And then we've got our focus afterwards. So even though the code was the exact same, except for the order, uh, the order does matter. So that focus was overriding the active. What's going on is 
the browser is applying both focus and active as soon as I do this mouse click down and or mouse down as it's called and um, so whichever of our styling snippets comes last is going to be the one that's applied. So anyway, um, with that said, there's one more thing I want to point out, and that is uh, this tab has focus on it right now, but if I click away, let's say I clicked to another component and gave another component focus, then we would no longer have that focus styling here. We can easily add some styling that does stick around by simply saying button, and let's go look at the DOM again and see what class is on this one after um, after clicking and I see let's see MUI dash selected over here so if we add that and I will just have it have the um, let's see we could put that green again that was what I was gonna say but that would overwrite the gold from the active so let's just say, let's give it its own color, let's say purple. So there we go. So that's going to kind of overwrite that focus um, because the focus and the MUI selected are all applied at the same time. And that's interesting, it's not actually overriding the active, so let's go ahead and give that a green color. And now when I click away, I don't know if you can hear me clicking, but I click away and it keeps that green color because now we're not dependent on the um, focus pseudo class here. So really we could remove that focus pseudo class and I bet we'd get the exact same outcome. Yep, so we get the exact same visual outcome. Um, so anyway, this is probably the styling that you'd want if you care about hover, active, and focus. You just ditch the focus, use MUI selected, and it's a little bit better. Next, we're going to dive into the tab indicator props, which is, and that's literally the name of a prop on the tabs component. And what that one does is, there we go, thank you TypeScript. Um, what that one does is it actually lets us style the tab indicator, which is an underlying element in um, the tabs component. So if you've ever used the text field and used input props on the text field, input props passes whatever you give it down to the compositional component of the input, which is, helps make up the, helps compose the text field. In this case, a um, little bit different in that the indicator is not really a component of its own, but it will render as its own element in the DOM. And so it's a, a similar concept. So what we can do is we can give that um, let's say SX. Actually, before we do that, I want to hover over and show you the typing that it has. Um, it's pretty important. So we see that there is the, oh, come back, the HTML attributes and the SX props. Those are the two things that it accepts. So HTML attributes, um, that's actually pretty interesting to dive into, and I'll show you a couple examples after I put some SX styling on here. Um, but any in React, any div, any basic HTML element, you know, a div, a span, etc., they have certain attributes or props that they can actually accept. We don't really think about that, but they do, like on click, for example. Um, anyway, so let's put in this SX value. Give it a background color of red, and I will give it height of four pixels and since we're using the SX prop, we can just use the shorthand of four, a height of four, and the indicator by default is about two pixels tall, and this will increase its height to four pixels. I think it's being a little slow to update because I'm still seeing two over here, but I do see that red color. Let me refresh here. There we go. So just being a little slow, but it refreshed, and now it's four pixels. And so pretty simple styling there. Um, I'm going to add a couple more values in here to show you what I mean by um, by this accepting HTML attributes. So one that we can do is title and so I will just pass a little title of a string value of my ttip and Come on, there we go. So 
I can actually pass that to the indicator. And now we have a nice little tooltip. And that is just like a basic HTML tooltip. And um, so if you didn't catch it, that was just a title attribute. Now, one really useful thing is that we can pass hidden true. If I could type, there we go, hidden true. That's just a Boolean value of true. And what that does is it actually gives us a really, really easy way to hide and show the tab indicator. Now hidden true, we don't have a tab indicator. It's still rendered. You can see it over here in DevTools, but it is not visually um, present. So if you use display none in SX, that would actually be a better way because then it wouldn't render at all and your DOM would be a little bit lighter. But this is actually a pretty handy way um, to just get the tooltip to disappear. So um, I hope that these that this quick lesson in styling tabs and individual tab components was helpful. Uh, there are links to documentation with all this code in the video details. And please do consider subscribing, really keeps me motivated. So with that, I appreciate your time.